a frequency beyond space and time. Unspeakable knowledge. It is Mad Tower Radio. As the congressional debate over gun control flares up yet again, we regret to report the murder of the wife and her two children by their husband and father. The father purchased the rifle used in the crime at his local gun store two days earlier. This brutal killing took place while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his ten-year-old son came to investigate the commotion, the father shot him too. His six-year-old daughter had the good sense to hide in the bathroom, but the reports suggest he lured her out by telling her it was just a game. The girl was found shot once in the chest from point-blank range. The mother, who he shot in the stomach, was pregnant at the time. Police arriving on the scene after neighbors called 911 found the father in his car, listening to the radio. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. They said it was like he was chanting some strange spell. There was another family shot to death in the same state last month, and in December last year, a man used a rifle and meat cleaver to murder his entire family. In each case, the perpetrators were fathers. State police say the string of domestic homicides appear unrelated, though it could be part of a larger trend, such as employment, child care, and other social issues facing the, the average family. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mad Tower Radio. My name is Daniel, joined by Christian, as always. Hello. Uh, how you doing, Christian? Well, you are talking to a um, new night version of myself. Yeah, you recently had to flip over to that uh, nocturnal schedule. How's that been working out for you? Well, due to uh, the... What is this now? Tenth week of the quarantine. I've picked up mm-hmm. a night job, and mm-hmm. I've not seen the sun in three days. Hell yeah! That's how I'd like to live eventually. Is just never see the sun. It's only made me stronger, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I brought something interesting today. It's uh. It's a collection of sorts. It's barely a cryptid. I know it's my week for cryptid, but I saw this and I was like, dude, I want to talk about this. Uh, Because it fits our theme. And we're going to be talking about what I personally believe to be the best form of fear, which is the audio format. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. I found a... uh, I'd I'd heard of them vaguely before. Have you heard of uh, number stations? I believe I've heard some kind of urban legendy things. Like, if you connect to this station, you'll hear spooky noises. Alright, well, listen to this, because I'm going to read to you what the number stations are, right? And then afterwards, we're going to get into what they're for. So, this isn't uh, that one station in Fallout, the spooky station? Uh, it's similar. Okay, because that's, that's my main point of reference. Oh no, dude. Get, get ready, because these are fucking crazy. So this first one we have is called MDZBH, or commonly known as UVB76. That's the station's call sign. <laughs> In the middle of a Russian swampland, not Whoa. far from the city of St. Petersburg, is a rectangular iron gate. Beyond its rusted bars is a collection of radio towers, abandoned buildings, and power lines bordered by a dry stone wall. This sinister location is the focus of a mystery which stretches back to the height of the Cold War. This building is thought to be the headquarters of the radio station MDZHB that no one has ever claimed to run. Ooh. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for the last three and a half decades, it's been broadcasting a dull, monotonous tone. Every few seconds, that's joined by a second sound, like some kind of ghostly ship sounding its foghorn. Then the drone continues. 
That's all it is. That's... I, I, you can go on YouTube, and if you just search UVB76 live, you can hear it. That's... You can listen to this station right so now. So good. That's so freaking cool. Yep. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, man. Do you spend your nights just, like, curled up in a blanket, like, cup of coffee, wrapped <laughs> head to toe, listening to this station? As I was, like, researching this, I was like, sounds like it's time to buy a shortwave radio. Can you can you explain to us, um, radio wave layman, what that means? Uh, in the layman's terms, uh... Radio waves uh, physically project, and I mean, I guess all all data signals do, but like uh, radio waves arc based on their frequency, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, shortwave radios are a little bit different, though, because they bounce like uh, most radio waves operate off of like line of sight and shit so you can only get uh you can only get radio communications from x distance you know yeah. dependent on like the weather or if you're in a heavily wooded area blah 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 but shortwave radios they can they bounce off the ionosphere and off the surface of the earth so shortwave radios can basically go around the whole world. Okay, that's that's cool. Like it can loop using the atmosphere. No, radio waves are crazy. Yep. yep, radio waves are crazy. You can listen to shortwave radio stations from pretty much anywhere in the world. But no, back to UVB-76. Once or twice a week, a man or woman will interrupt to read out some words in Russian. Oh. Words heard have been things like farming specialist, dingy, uh, other coded words. And then it goes right back to the buzzing. Don't touch that dial now, we're just getting started. Now, anybody with a shortwave radio can listen to this station at frequency 4625 kilohertz. It's That's all it is. It's just this person... It's like this disgusting, horrible tone. And then every now and then someone will pop in and read some words. Let me see if I can find you some of it. I'm just I'm just trying to think like what's the the gain from constantly blasting out radio waves in this cursed way? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But get ready. Here we go. UVB76, the buzzer, live on the SWL channel on YouTube. Yep. Horrible. Mm. I hate hearing it. I Like, did somebody just, like, leave the, the radio running one day and they just never turned it off? Um, so there's a couple theories on what it's for, right? So... While no one has claimed this radio station, the general consensus is, okay, it's Russia's radio station. Right? Like a, a Russian um, department? Like a state-run? Maybe. Okay. So, people have been listening to this radio station on and off pretty much ever since it broadcasted. Like... You can safely assume that this channel is being monitored pretty much 24/7. Good. They're doing the Lord's so work. So people have heard people have heard distant conversations and other background noise behind mm-hmm. the buzzer, which the people people believe that that means that the buzzer is not part of the broadcast and it's pretty much someone has an open mic and the this device be, right behind the mic is making the buzzing noises. Oh, like it's like it's an artificial like buzz. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's way more nefarious. But then other people believe that the microphone might have been turned on accidentally. But one such uh, incident of this was on November third, two thousand one, when a conversation in Russian was heard. 
and I'm not even going to attempt to read that, but the English translation, it says, I am 143, not receiving the generator. That stuff comes from the hardware room. I am 143, I am not the generator, it comes from the hardware room. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It, there have also. Let me pull up the wiki page on it. <laughs> there's a wiki page, just like cataloging. There's a wiki page for UVB seventy six. You just gotta catalog the random dialogue that people are broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, back in twenty ten, there was another conversation recorded, also in Russian. Uh, the English translation is Officer of the Duty Station, debut, Ensign Uspenskaya, received a test call from Nazedha, understood. So That's it. Nothing, nothing, uh, incriminating? Nope, nothing nefarious, nothing... Suspicious in any way? No, it just sounds like they overheard someone taking over the station and relieving whoever was currently at the station. So if it's not uh, ostensibly suspicious, if it's not outwardly spooky, what's the point? Like, why, why blast out this audio? So other, um... A common, the most common belief, and what I think is very possible, is that Russia wants to save this station for something in the future. Oh, it's like Maybe, working on a domain name? Yeah, they're like, yeah, nobody will use this frequency if we just play this obnoxious buzzing the entire time. Good idea, Russia. You know. No, that makes uh, sense. But I think it's strange that it was never claimed ever. Like, if you want to hold down the radio station, Putin, I don't think that's a I don't think that's a huge offense to the world. Yeah, you don't need to quarantine somebody or like spend their life's goal parked on this station constantly yeah. blasting audio or like the gulag to you. Yeah. My personal theory is maybe it's like a uh Maybe it's like a uh, base. Like maybe maybe their comms are running at like four six two six or four six two four kilohertz, and it's like, oh, just spin the fucking dial till you hear the, <laughs> and then you know, like, okay, tune slightly, yeah, up or down from there. An orientation point. That's a good idea. You know, see, you you look at it with such a different perspective, having some radio experience i would have never even thought about just being able to whack the dial around until you find the extremely obvious and annoying buzzing so that you could tune it or fine tune it to your Mm -hmm. own station cool um but then there's other more interesting theories like (laughs) some people think that it's a dead man switch theory and if the buzzing ever ceases russia's all in russia's entire nuclear arsenal will just fucking (laughs) launch <laughs> oh no. Why? Uh-huh. <laughs> Why? It's just going to fucking blast away. I thought you were going to drop me with like if you are listening when the station ends you die. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's a live grenade. Nope. You never know when it's going to go off. Mhm. <laughs> what reason do they have to believe that Russia's nuclear arsenal pops when the station ends? Um, none. It would sound cool for a spy movie. No, it it would sound pretty freaking cool. It does. Now, what I think is weird is, like, if you want to have it as, like, an orientation station, if you want to use it as, like... Oh, there's one more I forgot. Um, people theorize that it's like a, you know, a reserve. You know how I said they're like just playing that tone so nobody would use the frequency? Yeah. 
uh, other people think that like in an emergency that the tone will stop and it'll be used to direct uh, soldiers, Russian soldiers. Like if all comms are down, it's like, okay, everybody tune to this station. We've got the one. That's We've right. got the backup. Yeah. Gotcha. You know? And if those are the cases, why randomly does it stop so that people can read words over it? Is there a chance it's just picking up incidental dialogue? Like people are in the room and the mic's hot? Or is it... I mean, that's another possibility. Okay, listen up and don't you move. Need to take a piss? Hold it. The show has got just 60 seconds to go, but I've got a message for all you folks out there in radio land. So sit tight and bend the ear. Now is the time for action. Our society is rotten to the core. I'm talking to all of you fine upstanding folks who got their welfare cut, got their jobs pulled out from under them. Yeah, you. You know what to do. Now's the time. Do it. Your son. Send him on his way to heaven. By your own hand. It's not too late. If you act fast. You. What did you do? Right in front of everyone? I'm putting this on the news, you psycho. Murderer. But it, it seems to be intentionally broadcast. What do you mean? I think people go up to this machine they cut the droning and then they read these words is it something like listen dude i know you've been stationed at cursed radio tower all week but the boss says you have to shoot off a couple of words every seven hours just to make sure everything's clear and he's like fine dude i'll read a couple words mowing oh you mean just to test the microphone yeah like some some grunt's got to be like okay dude microwave Toaster of <laughs> applesauce. Happy boss. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, there's really no other way to test the microphone live on the station without doing something like that. But I always, th- I always figured it was like pre-recorded. You know, that's terrifying. But I guess it's also just as plausible that they're like, oh, test the microphone. Say a couple sentences. No one's listening. If Except everyone's listening. Can you communicate through one single station? Like, how does, how does talking on a radio work? Like, if I tuned them, can I send them audio on the same frequency? Or does it get all mixed up in the sky? No, I mean, you'd be live on that station with them. And you can talk, but I'd... Doubt that they're going to say anything back. Okay, interesting. Maybe one night when I'm cold and alone, I can call the Russian hotline. But according to the Wikipedia page, on May 15th, a mere three days ago, the buzzer was interrupted by a third-party transmission, likely sent by French fishermen. I... Didn't know we were living in such extraordinary times. And on the exact same day, about four hours later, the buzzer began playing Russian music. Yo, I bet the people who've been listening for decades went crazy this week. (laughs) They're they're busting it open. I know. Two extraordinary (laughs) radio events in one week. Well, hold on. We got a third. On May 17th, 2020, UVB-76 was interrupted again by a short third-party transmission. It is suspected to be sent by the same French people as on May 15th, 2020. Do you think the Russians are pissed? (laughs) Quit fucking with our radio. Get off our station, bro. We've, We've been here for years. Yeah, we've been broadcasting here for... Three decades. Get the fuck out of here. But the tr- the station has gone through a bunch of different call signs. Is, you know, is so that just to uh, classify and identify it, or what do what does a call yeah, it's sign just do? your identifier. Okay. But it's gone. It's been LNR four eight seven zero one. 
VM62, A1JZH. Like, it's just, they switch the call signs a lot. Okay. Which, so you know that this thing is, like, active. Like, it's not like, oh, it's just so old we forgot. Yeah, like, yeah, it's... It's still being used or, or talked about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think you could handle the position of just sitting at the radio void eight hours a day, just making sure the mic's hot and checking it every couple hours or so? Yeah, that'd be a fucking that's, easy job. And that's your permanent position, just to sit there. Yeah, just get on the radio, like, uh, microwave, potato, fish, and then just <laughs> listen to the buzzing. Mm -hmm. You don't think you'd go absolutely mad? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the poor guy that's operating it now probably has headphones. Oh, yeah, dude can hang out and listen to Russian podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> but listen to this. In 2011, a group of urban explorers claimed to have explored the buildings at Povorovo to find an abandoned military base and in it a radio log record confirming the operation of a transmitter at 4625 kilohertz. So, people claim that they found it. The transmitter? Yeah, so they've moved locations a couple times, too, right? Oh, the, all right. Uh, a former transmitter was located near Povorovo, Russia. You know? These urban explorers. Mm-hmm. Kindred spirits trying to find the truth. Oh, yeah. They're crazy. I was watching some videos of, like, Russian urban explorers, and they're straight up just, like, breaking into, like, Cold War military bases. Okay, that one's, like, that's where you get, like, a John Carpenter's The Thing sequel. Like, I'm not, I'm not going that far. I mean, that's also where fucking Boris shoots you. <laughs> yeah. They... Seems like a pretty good, like, stand-your-ground state. I don't think I'd be breaking into houses in Russia. Yeah, no. Especially not a military base. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the UVB76 live feed on YouTube, the chat section, people just spam Russian. <laughs> Russian characters. Okay. Let me give another listen just to remember how cursed. Yep. Still cursed. You can't trust the tap water. Have you made any attempt to decipher these um, Russian scripts? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. All in due time, my friend. Now, here's the good reveal, right? These are known as number stations, right? Maybe not this one specifically. But you can find a shitload of radio stations to this day on a website called preom.org. I'm going to send you the link right now. Okay. Right? Preom.org goes through and is just a catalog of all these cursed radio stations, these number stations. Shortwave radio stations that broadcast nothing but strings of numbers and code sometimes in Morse code, no. they are broadcast, they are suspected to be broadcasting coded transmissions to intelligence field agents. Oh, no. They are just straight up shooting out messages to like spies. Like secret data transmitters. This is horrid. Yep, yep. Now, the only way we know about this is there's this former KGB agent. I forgot his name. Jack Barsky, right? And he moved to the... Uh, 
he moved to the U.S. and went on TV and did like a uh, <laughs> like a spill all about um, spy shit that he knew. And he talked about how he would just be sitting there decoding these transmissions from the number stations for like three hours. It's absolutely insane to me. Why would this man go out and spill the truth and not expect to find a Kalashnikov in the back of his throat? Uh, because he lives in Pennsylvania. Oh. Crossover. He lives in episode. Pennsylvania now. Want to add this man to our pantheon? With Rom yeah, and the Mantis. I don't think men. we're cool enough to uh, <laughs> get him on the <this> show. <laughs> but no, it's super interesting. And that's the that's the only way we know that what these fucking uh, number stations are for. Because this dude came out and was like, yeah, I would just sit there and transmit the fucking signals from the Soviets. So, have you seen any reports of people finding interesting strings of code or deciphering any messages from these broadcasts? So here's the thing, right? Um, you know how a lot of them broadcast these tones, mm -hmm. like if you listen to the buzzer, right? They'll play back these tones that don't sound like anything except just noise. But yeah, there's just... this software that you can download called Dig TRX, and it allows you to transform things like text and images into tones that can be transmitted and recorded mm. and then decoded into text. How do you turn text into sound? I don't know. With Dig TRX, apparently. With. Uh, I don't. But even if you went through all this trouble, right? Mm -hmm. You will still never likely decode anything that was transmitted over that. If it's sensitive information, you will probably never decode it because in cryptology, there's this thing called a one time pad, right? So they send their boys over with the one-time pad, and then the code that they're sending over the radio, once you decrypt that with Dig TRX, you then have to decrypt it again through the one-time pad to get the actual message. Oh, it's, it's protected. It's encrypted yep. for, okay, fine. And then you, when you're done, you just burn the pad. So we're not going to find secret military codes today. Nope. You can Shit. listen to them all you want. You'll just never know. That's genius. Mm-hmm. And we know that these are happening to this day because I'm trying to find it right now, but I can't. But there was a uh, Czech spy in the UK who got arrested on sus uh, suspicion of espionage, right? Mm -hmm. And they found these one-time pads on him. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Dude, you're going to fry, dude. If you had the, the secret codes on you, good night, mm -hmm. comrade. Yeah, so if you go on preom dot org you can find these stations and their schedules right now and you can you can just listen to these information codes that are supposed to be going to actual fucking spies right now yeah i'm i'm sitting on the site right now it's terrifying isn't it you can just listen to it and there's ones from all over the world uh, we got English stations, German stations, Slavic stations, uh, Taiwan, North Korea, South Korea. Yeah, I see this one's a whole page for uh, diplomatic communications. Mm-hmm. 
This is nuts. It's insane. This is awesome. Like, I want to go buy a radio just to listen. The the idea of... It's, it's almost like a pirate radio. Like, this sort of semi-free, uh, unregulated, unlistenable uh, flow of information. It's pretty uh, romantic and pretty enticing these days. It's almost like the... Uh... You know, it's almost like the first version of the internet, if you think about it. It's almost what the internet should have been before it got all gross. Yeah, before they decided they could worm their way into our browsers and our laptops. Well, now... Can't hack my radio, buddy. Yeah, bro, I can send you memes through the sound waves that you have to decrypt. That's the future. <laughs> Decrypting memes through DigTRX. <laughs> You like text all your homies and be like, "Hey, dude, get on seven seven three two five and then you hear Bruh. and you just laugh because you know what it is. <laughs> you decrypt it. You're like, you get like one meme every three hours because <laughs> you have to listen to like a six hour droning tone for a single image. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. That's all of Reddit on Dig TRX. <laughs> the life I want to live. I should buy a shortwave radio and do that. Just start broadcasting fucking memes that you have to decode through Dig DRX. There's, there could be like an enclave of people somewhere in the world. They're like, this guy's been broadcasting these weird fluctuating tones for years and we've been paying attention all our life. And then one day one of them finds the uh, encrypt decryption tool and they just see... Mm -hmm. Mountains of memes. Oh, I know. It'd get popular on, like, some stupid, creepy subreddit. And then, like, some guy who actually has a little bit of radio knowledge will come along and just be like, you guys can just decode it with Dig TRX, And it's just shit posts. And it's just Eiffel 65 blue. <laughs> it's just blue by Eiffel 65. On loop infinitely but like encrypted that'd be great i'm gonna you know what? i think i'm gonna install dig trx after this do a little little uh corporate espionage a little do a little musical espionage <laughs> oh drop my pen i think that would be really fun there's some more curse stations so most of them people are just like, oh, it's a number station. Not to downplay number stations, because those are fucking sick. But there's one called the Backwards Music Station. And it's been picked up by international shortwave listeners for decades. But it doesn't play backwards music. Nor does it play anything other than just what sounds like uh, whale mating calls. Or records played backwards. Oh? Yeah, that was the one I sent you yesterday and told you to listen to. Yeah, that you sent this incredibly um, disturbing audio file to me, and I was just like, what? what, what yeah, it's bad. What joy do you get from this? This hell. <laughs> like, uh, like the buzzer, it's just like, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. But this one, it's like horrible. It's like assaulting me. It's like, hey, dude, do you want to listen to the amber alert tone on loop all day? Hey, man, do you want to listen to my amber alert tone dubstep remix? Oh, fuck. Because that's what the backwards number or music station is. It's insane. But there's a whole community of people just dedicated to documenting these number stations. And have they found anything uh, of note? Any particular clue as to what the hell's going on? No, just that it's weird. <laughs> but there is like, it's just weird to me that they're still running to this day, right? And they all get updated so frequently, so it's not like people just set it on auto and then... You know, 
director of the CIA forgot, like they are actively broadcasting, meaning that there's active espionage going on. Oh, for sure. You can't be sending that data through the cell tower. You can't be sending it through your Apple iPhone. Yep. I don't know if we talked about it on here or not, but I remember you saying that the Cold War... You said something where some people believe that the Cold War never ended. Oh, that's me. That's just my belief. And it, it, it didn't. <laughs> it uh, With the discovery my discovery of these uh number stations yeah i think i'd have to agree with you it's it's just become kind of chill but no it's it's the animosity still there the like dick measuring contest it's all still Mm -hmm. here we're just all buying iphones now and living in a Mm -hmm. future hellscape but it's we're still cold warring at least we live in the, uh, 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 at least we have the International Space Station. Mm. Cool. <laughs> uh. But no, back to the backwards music station. Uh, some believe that the radio station originates from a U.S. naval base on the southern coast because the frequencies are similar to naval frequencies. Others report or other speculated reports that the station is in Virginia Beach, Jacksonville, Florida, or others believe that the radio signals originate from England, where the frequency strength is relatively strong. The third theory is that the signals are actually transnational communications that employ Lincompex. Lincompex is a unique form of signal communications employed by both defense and commercial industries. I feel like I could imagine most easily some good old boys on the base, and they're like, hey, dude, I got some of my Johnny Cash records. You want to play them backwards on this radio? (laughs) He's like, yeah, dude, totally. Spin that shit. I really want to believe that some of them are just people fucking with us. Well, I mean, there there are ones that are just fucking with us. If you go on Priam, there are ones that are marked like fake messages. Oh, no. Like, they've just totally ruled out any legitimate use. It's just dudes throwing noise into the void. Yeah, it's just dudes throwing noise into the void, fucking around. I mean, we're one to talk, but... Man, I love radio. <laughs> It's crazy. The medium is dying. I'm going to buy a radio. Fuck it. I mean, I hasn't every single person at one time in their life been driving in the car, looked at the little dangly thing in their car outside and go, how in the fuck does Justin Timberlake's sexy back get to my car through this? That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. They're cool as fuck. So, have you ever had any cursed radio experiences yourself? Um, I don't know if um, this uh, legitimately counts, but do you remember uh, in high school when we had a particular um, affinity for the uh, that one radio app? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zello? Yeah, Zello. Does that, it's digital radio count? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a, it's pretty much a walkie-talkie, yeah. Yeah, uh, for those unattuned, uh, Zello is this app that you and all your stupid friends can get on the same frequency and just, like, walkie-talkie each other through your phone, and we would just sit there in class just buzzing each other in. Yeah, it's like a phone call with extra steps. Yeah, it's just like a shitty, inefficient group chat. Mm-hmm. And it's always live too. Mm-hmm. Like the settings for it on your phone, it's like it's always live. So you'll have your phone in your pocket while you're just chilling, having dinner with the family, and then someone will come on the radio station and just start screaming vulgarities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the danger of live radio. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of always been a dream of mine to run an independent uh, station. 
or just an independent channel. Yeah. I mean, you could be like a report of the week. You know who that is? No. He's that uh, that dude who reviews fast food. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, he has a uh, quote-unquote podcast, but he exclusively broadcasts it over shortwave radio. <laughs> I follow him on Twitter, and every week he'll like tweet out the frequency and what time he's going to be broadcasting. Listen here, you fucking hipsters. You can't get it on the Apple podcasting app. You gotta buy a fucking ham radio. <laughs> Listen to my podcast. That man is committed, and I'm honestly jealous. <laughs> hey, folks. Get yourself a radio, and you can catch Mad Tower Radio after dark. Oh, you know, that actually is not a bad idea. I'm... I'll plant the seed. I'm pretty happy to to talk business after this call. All right. Yeah. But let's move on then, shall we? Here's a cursed radio experience I found. With an area in within an area that you and I are both a little familiar with. Oh. Lockport family says mysterious voices music comes from the house's walls. Local radio station may be the source. This is from ABC7 Chicago News. Ah, ABC7 Chicago. A family in Lockport, Illinois said strange sounds, including music and talk radio, have been coming out of their walls and keeping them up at night, on and off, for about six years. Okay, and then they go into this immediate cursed quote from the little girl living in the house, nine-year-old. She goes, there are voices in the wall, and I don't know what it is. No. Don't say that, ever. Yeah, you gotta, like, preface that to your kids, or to your parents. If my kid says that to me, we're moving, immediately. This, just just the onset of this uh, story is super House of Leaves. Yeah. Where you're like, hey, dude, I just hear what sounds like a radio being blasted inside of my walls. Mm-hmm. How does how does that happen to you? Like. Yeah. Uh, the family, the father, Richard, said the family doesn't have any speakers in their walls. He captured some of the late night noise on his phone and sent it to the ABC 7 team. The music was faint, but the team could hear it. He goes, it's one of our favorite songs but not at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I like how the guy is just more annoyed. He's more annoyed than being like, why is my house cursed? Yeah. What? <laughs> yep. The faint, just the faint buzzing of your favorite tracks, but you can never turn it off. <laughs> Richard Smith called Lockport Police, who took two detailed reports about the bizarre problem. In one, the officer noted that he could hear voices and music and talking about Christ. Then the <laughs> officer said he heard a commercial for the Christian radio station AM1160. If my radio, if like the wall is playing a radio station, okay, that's kind of creepy. If the wall is playing prayers, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> We're sleeping oh. in a tent in the backyard. If the wall is telling me to repent... Now, the father has tried a lot of things. He, he he cut out a whole fucking piece of the wall. No, naturally. To expose the le- electrical wire and conduit to come up with a solution. Pulls out the wall. There's no big reveal. Mm. There's no big... There's. It just looks like normal back there. Uh, it doesn't... Now, they got a radio... An, an, a radio engineering expert... Patrick Berger, he goes, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does. He goes, AM is a wild thing. (laughs) He knows. He said, when it comes to something like this, there's a small amount of people who actually have experience. Now, Berger goes on to say that maybe the pipes in the wall, the pipes in the wall could be acting like a speaker. The the pipes in the wall are capturing the radio and then boosting it at him it could just be acting like an antenna how the what the fuck is an antenna 
How does an antenna work? Uh, it receives the signal. But how? How does how do these invisible sound waves whack this antenna and then play it? I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe if the pipe is hollow, it's re- the because sound is vibration, mm-hmm. right? Mm, but I also don't understand how how the fuck it's it's hitting the pipe. But then I don't know how the pipe is just converting this yeah, I th- wave into the actual sound that it's supposed to be. I thought there was some kind of process where like, they capture the wave and then they turn it into the audio that we understand. Now, you can, you can use some, like, some bad antennas. Like, you can use a plastic spoon as an antenna. You can use a paper clip as an antenna. But... That antenna still needs to be connected to the radio to fucking play the mute, like mm-hmm. the sound, mm-hmm. you know? That, it's very weird. It makes me think about what if my brain just matches the frequency of some AM radio and then I just start hearing commercials. That would be bad. Forever. That would be very bad. Like, I guess a, a teen grows up, their skull, like, grows into its full form, and it grows into the perfect size and, like, density to collect Kids Bob radio or something horrible. <laughs> Cursed with eternal Kids Bob. hmm But, yeah, that's that's... There's some cursed radio stories for you. Yeah, no, the the genuine takeaway is radio is fucking insane. Radio is fucking insane. But that's pretty much my closing thought on it. I'm excited to hear what you have for me today. So, I, last week, was extremely um, invigorated by the conspiracy conversation, and specifically on the topic of the demiurge Mm -hmm. so i spent a good portion of the week sort of building this base of knowledge like getting ready to have this really drawn out and interesting theological conversation with you i was reading the bible for the first time in like over a decade like making my grandmother proud (laughs) but but, yeah but it's not i couldn't really frame it as a conspiracy Mm -hmm. it kind of would have just been like a a show and tell uh theology discussion so i'm gonna push it off to next week and make it be my creature as opposed to a conspiracy (laughs) so instead instead we're gonna talk about another misunderstood piece of technology Another perfect um, mixing of our topics. So let me first ask you, why did the United States of America invade Iraq? In your opinion. This is the part where I sound like a fucking idiot. (laughs) So, Iran is where Saddam was, right? Iraq. That was Iran? It was Iraq. Iraq is where Saddam was? Yes, Saddam Hussein. Well, obviously, we went over there to kick Saddam Hussein's ass. Truth. 204863. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. Do you know or are you um, aware of the commonly held uh, justification for this war? Uh, no. The argument that uh, Saddam possessed weapons of mass destruction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if I told you? The United States invaded Iraq to take down Saddam Hussein 
to shut his stargate down. I'm sorry. The Saddam Hussein stargate. Yes, they needed to close his stargate. <laughs> I really don't have any words for that. You don't have words. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I really, I really wish I had like something better to say, but (laughs) shut down Saddam Hussein's Stargate. Yes. Okay. There's an Australian, um, I guess I'm gonna call him a philosopher. Uh, He's he's got his MA in philosophy. He's got a doctorate in government something. His name is Dr. Michael E. Sala. And his, okay. And his argument is that there is ancient technology in the Sumerian ruins in modern day Iraq. And he has this really lovely uh, report that I found and completely free, easy for you to read today. I'll put a link in the, in the show. And he says that there are things like uh, cuneiform tablets there's these inscriptions and it builds on the sumerian religion for his justification that (laughs) he's got straight up history channel ass ancient alien tech amazing so uh what is your familiarity with this sort of ancient um uh mesopotamia area uh, relationship with alien technology do you have any sort of understanding of this topic yeah yeah i mean you watch an episode of ancient aliens you kind of get the gist of it it was the cradle of civilization uh that's where a lot of the first civilization started popping up was right around the middle east area mm-hmm. and uh there's a lot of like super precision stone work out there exactly there's like stuff like that there's a uh, specific and often cited um inscription it's this image of a god or some such creature holding up the solar system and, mm-hmm. and when they look at this inscription there's an extra planet in the sky (sighs) that is believed to be the planet of nibiru 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 it has okay a particularly um oblong uh what what the hell's the word for (laughs) the rotation around the sun and it takes about 3600 years for it to loop all the way back to enter the solar system huh and the ancient sumerians knew this yes they were talking about nibiru they were down with it so this is that's interesting because um if you keep up with astro astronomy almost said astrology um if you keep up with astronomy there are actually people out there who believe that there could be another planet with a super weird orbit. Oh, yeah. And that's just why we haven't discovered it yet. I I was seeing, like, NASA reports. They were like, yeah, there totally could be these extra, just sort of weirdly um, looping planets that just sort of stretch and wane out of our solar system, but they're still technically in our orbit. That's the word. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, but um, there's also text from the Book of Enoch. Have you ever read this particular ancient Hebrew text? No. I can't say I've heard of the cursed Book of Enoch. Well, it's one of those bad boy books that didn't get to make it to the Bible. And... What do you mean? It... Like, when the Bible was being uh, drawn up, the faith... By Constantine? The faith had to, like, be really tight about what specific text they wanted in they didn't let these sort of heretical ideas into the actual like main text 
Mm -hmm. So things like the Book of Enoch get led astray. But it tells this story about a group of rebel angels called the Nephilim. Which is fucking sick. That is pretty fucking sick. Will not lie. There were like two or three hundred rebel angels called the Nephilim. They settled on Earth and they began to intermingle and interbreed with these ancient Mesopotamian cultures. Christ. And eventually, their masters, the Elohim, called them back, and they left. Jesus. Now, it is Dr. Michael Sala's understanding that they built and made use of a stargate to do that uh, transporting to and from, that when Nibiru is close to the solar system, they're able to make that jump to and from our planet. So almost like Nibiru is like uh, the physical heaven? I don't really see the more theological aspect of it. He's mostly just talking... um, uh, grounded science but in a sense if that's where the angels live yeah heaven's just shooting out around the sky and it takes a couple thousand oh, years Oh, so is he looking at this from like in the quote unquote angels are actually aliens yes he's he took it from like a see their culture is talking about this there's something to it hmm and okay there are a number of suggested locations that this stargate could be such as uh uruk the uh ancient city or the dark ziggurat of enzu have you heard of this thing no what the fuck is the dark ziggurat well a ziggurat you know is a kicking rad pyramid Mm -hmm. and there's just this particular um special dark ziggurat in the ancient city of enzu that you know this, like, Babylonian warlock used to live in? <laughs> Christ! Me- Mesopotamian shit is amazing. I love, like, ancient... Uh, the things you fucking find, man. Culture? Babylonian warlocks. They were busting it wide back in early civilization. When they found out how to farm, everything just went crazy. Apparently. <laughs> and... So, the idea is, uh, Saddam Hussein comes into power, discovers this um, ancient alien technology, and uh, Sala goes on to report that during the Gulf War in the 90s, the Mm -hmm. Nibiru was coming back into loop with our solar system, and that there was another set of... um, uh, cross pollinations between our planets and okay so the nephilim were like oh what up bro it's been a while bro welcome back mm-hmm. and cites a couple of reports that united states fighter jets downed air um ufos during the gulf war in iraq Oh my god. And that this uh, reactivated the Stargate. These All these incidents. There's a particular um, s- legend around the Gulf War. It comes to be known as like the uh, Iraqi Roswell, where they talk about uh, fighter jets downing UFOs. Really? <laughs> hmm. And... There becomes this growing um, mysticism, this growing myth that uh, because, you know, Iraq is the cradle of civilization, life began here, that there's this mysticism and supernatural alien things going on. So I'm going to read you this this lovely quote from uh, citizens during the early Iraq war. Okay. There are talks about extraterrestrials in Iraq, but nothing is said about any crash. It is rumored that a market in Salamania to the south of Zarzi that aliens are Saddam's guests. 
Where do they stay then? People mention some underground base, but Saddam has a palace in this valley, an old stronghold, Kalat e Jalundi. Earlier, it belonged to the royal family, but after the revolution, the government took possession of the fortress, and now, like every palace in Iraq, it is a summer residence of Saddam Hussein. The fortress is mentioned here for a very simple reason. It is practically impossible to penetrate into it. The citadel stands on a hill, surrounded with vertical precipices on three sides. The precipices plunge down to the Little Zab River. It is said that Saddam lets aliens stay there. No! And, whoa, he's chilling with the aliens in his palace. Saddam's little alien chateau. He he reportedly had a number of, like it, the quote says, uh, homes, residences all throughout the country where he could hide his dudes. Uh-huh. And the rumors just spiral out of control from there. I read this wonderful, like, um, anthropological study about um, people who lived in... Iraq during the sort of American occupation and there's these rumors of like American soldiers with x-ray goggles or like supernatural American soldiers or the fact that um, the aliens cut a deal with Saddam Hussein and they bioengineered mega scorpions uh, uh, <laughs> you heard this one? camel spiders uh, he he got the aliens to build him gigantic scorpions that guard the secret palaces and the secret space bunkers. That is amazing. <laughs> it's insane. So does it mention anywhere how the U.S. came about the knowledge that Saddam had the Stargate and the fucking mecha scorpions from Transformers? It, <laughs> it doesn't really... Um talk about any inciting incident it kind of draws the connection between um u.s forces knowing something's going on during the gulf war and that uh, as this activity sort of builds up they begin to put the pieces together that mm -hmm. okay maybe the stargate's active again maybe he found out how to use it so we got to get in there in 2001 or whatever to stop him from doing anything too crazy Jesus Christ. No. That's amazing. It's <laughs> the last interesting note that uh, Sala gives is that certain parties were already aware of this uh, ancient technology well before this uh, Middle Eastern conflicts. He talks about British and Nazi skirmishes over a Stargate during the World War II desert conflicts. Huh, they were, like the Africa campaigns? Yeah, that they were talking, like they both sides knew about it and they wanted to gain control of it. Good God. <laughs> so, Holy shit. I and mean, this guy goes, he goes in, he's pretty, pretty interesting. <laughs> I no, that sounds very interesting. No, do you <laughs> he kind of ends with, see, I was right. They got Saddam Hussein and space aliens didn't come pouring out of the dark ziggurat so they must have closed it oh fuck off that's such a cop out it's cheap it's lame but <laughs> kind of fun but he's right <laughs> could you, do you imagine like you're deep into your deployment you're tired you've been smashing camel spiders and your sergeant's like listen dude we're sending you into the ziggurat uh, be, be cool <laughs> But, uh, you're going to see some cool. shit. Yeah, we need you on the 50 cal for the fucking mecha scorpions. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the the Antarctica pyramid in Alien vs. Predator. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the dark ziggurat. So that's, it's, it's not the most uh, well-founded theory, but... It's got a pretty good, like, singular source, and it's just... I'm um, just happy that it exists, yeah, because a that's fun. a fucking awesome story. 
<laughs> Does it say anything about what, like, the plan was with this Stargate? Like, oh, he's just going to pop it open and they're going to come pouring out. He was going to use it to overwhelm the world with advanced alien um, technology, be that spacecraft, um, weaponry. So technically, I guess weapons of mass destruction would have kind of been correct, but... Oh, so Saddam was just like ordering all this fucking fancy new technology from the aliens. Yeah, from Space Amazon. That's insane. I do like that he's not just... Like, he draws uh, similar stuff in with it. Like, it being written about in ancient culture and, like, Babylonian warlocks and the ziggurat instead of just being like, yeah, Saddam had a Stargate. Yeah, he... He tries to build on it sort of culturally, but the weirdest part, and I wanted to save this for the end, is he name drops. He calls them the Anunnaki. Of course. Yeah. Like, they they come in, they intermingle, interbreed, and they're shadowy influence? I don't know, but... It's... Let me, let me just check something real quick. What is... <laughs> I don't know. I gotta look this up. Was Saddam Hussein given the key to Detroit? What? What? In Anunnaki. Hold up. No. Doesn't say anything about Saddam being an Anunnaki. Um just now finding this out um apparently the philadelphia museum has ancient sumerian like a large collection of ancient sumerian stuff hell yeah oh yeah i'm gonna ask that poor tour guide if saddam hussein had a stargate you gotta go check it out man you gotta do some nathan drake shit <laughs> break in there and steal the key to the stargate i it's, I also, um, as expected, the best part about this theory is all of the fucking photoshopped images of American soldiers, like, walking up to Stargates. <laughs> yes. So I'll let those rip. It's my favorite part. Yeah, shitty photoshops are the best part of any theory. Let me see if there's any about Saddam being an Anunnaki. Oh, I see the Stargate. Yeah. Any poor photoshops of his uh, mecha scorpions? I I don't think they're mecha as much as they're just really big. Ah, I think they're just okay. gigantic scorpions. Saddam Hussein scorpions. <laughs> I'm glad you you became so transfixed on the big boy scorpions. I love that. That's hilarious. I mean, if if you're going to get ancient tech or alien tech to give you a one-up on the war, are you not going to want gigantic scorpions? Do you think that they were like, <laughs> do you think that Saddam was like, hey, is there any way that you could take these scorpions and just make them giant? Or do you think the aliens were like, yeah, I mean... I guess we can take these scorpions and make them giant. Like, who who brokered that deal? <laughs> yeah, like, did Saddam want that, or was that what the Anunnaki were offering? I'm, it seems to me like he wanted it. He said, listen, we needed to protect our fort or our deserts. We need to make people not want to go into our uh, ancient palaces. How about some guard dogs? And they're like, bet, watch this, dude. Big scorpions. Oh, that's awesome. There's... <laughs> There's one, there's sort of these branching sub-theories trying to understand what his end goal was, and one of them states that they were going to resurrect Nebuchadnezzar. Sure. Just, you just go <laughs> wild. Of course. <laughs> why, why not? Oh my god. So, 
So say what you will about George Bush, but he did close the Stargate. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and I think with that, I'm about ready to uh, close this transmission. You have any final thoughts? <laughs> I'm dumbfounded. Thank, <laughs> thank your troops. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take it easy. Keep your eyes wide open. This is Mad Tower Radio ending transmission. Look behind you. I said look behind you.